All right, so um, I know a lot of you guys are struggling with learning how to play um, Blue Streak. I've noticed a lot of my students, they're not really comfortable with Blue Streaking. So I figured I make a generic video on like the general concepts. I'm going to explain my thought process the entire game. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's, this is like a classic Blue Streak game. Let's get into it. So I get a Sona. Typically, I think Sona is an insta cell as a unit. You know, she's never relevant in anything, right? I want to prioritize my one cost pairs so I can get some direction early game. All right, typically for TFT, this is like a basic concept. Typically, you want a two star frontliner and a two star backliner, and you want to play around what items you get, right? Okay, so here I decide to make 10 because I did the quick maths in my head. I'm like, all right, whatever, <laughs> time to build interest early. But then when you do that, you probably have to go in with the mindset that I'm going to lose streak because you have no real units to play. Even though I have this two star Maokai, unless I get like Noxus, like Cassiopeia 2 with Samira 2, because obviously like Noxus opener is broken. I don't ever see myself actually win streaking in Challenger anyways. Oh, also because I got so much gold, um, I knew that was going to be a two component gold start. So then. I'm lacking items that I can slam. So that also takes, I have to take that into consideration, right? Because if I don't have the ability to slam any items, I'm just gonna probably like not gonna win streak, right? And I take Layton Forge because I recognize my early game is probably gonna be doo doo. So in this case, I opt to just make 20 because even though it's a Maokai 2, I feel like. I'm going to lose regardless, right? I might as well just guarantee the 20 gold interest, right? This way, I have like a really big head start in terms of econ. So I'm planning to trade my HP for econ. Just throw in three Noxes here. Scout around, see if I could potentially beat anyone. I, could, I beat the uh, Kramzy for sure. I'm just hoping I don't play him. Also, um, I'm also looking around to see which side is optimal so I could kill more units, right? Like this Cho'Gath. Would I rather kill this Cho'Gath or would I rather kill like the Void Spawn? Right. Killing the Void Spawn doesn't decrease the damage taken, so I would like want to kill the Cho'Gath, right? So this is like a very like you don't have to do it, but if you want to like min-max the amount of HP you win or lose, I definitely recommend it. Right. Like here, honestly, looking back uh retrospectively, mm -hmm. I, I should have made 30. I should have made 30 here because I'm losing anyways. I don't, I, the reason I didn't make 30 is because, um, I, I value Swain too much, right? Because this unit's broken. I moved to this side because I see, I see that most of the units I can kill are on the right side. That makes sense, right? Like I, I felt like this value was easier to kill. Ideally I kill two here, right? Think about slamming a belt. I slam a bell here just so I could potentially kill two, but I, I think if I wanted to do something like this, I would have had to slam a rod on Cassiopeia as well. Um, but honestly, looking back, I probably should have just made 30, right? By selling the Swain in the Clud. But then, here I get a Swain pair, right? And then, like I said, Swain is a very good unit. So I'm thinking like, yes, I want to lose streak, but if I get a Swain too, I might as well just turn it around and start win streaking. Uh, right, because Swain's broken. Looking back, I probably should have put Cat instead of Clud. Just so I could kill more units. Because I think uh, in terms of unit effectiveness and damage output, Katarina definitely is a bit better than Clud. Right. And here, <clears throat> I wasn't really worried of losing my streak against Pramzy because he stamped, he stamped a stone plate on Swain, and Swain with a stone plate is basically immortal. It's like Swain on steroids. So, and with Noxus, right? So I wasn't worried. I was worried that I wouldn't kill the Rally here, but I do, so we chill it. Alright. Nice. Nice. Right? We're we're like killing a unit each round, even though our board is like our board is designed to lose, but at least take someone down with us, right? The two swains are like uh very very tanky, and the Cassiope is there to just single burst um a unit down, ideally. Uh 
I take I take a belt because I'm already in the process of I'm gonna I'm gonna commit to a five loss here. Um but I, once stage three comes around, the potential to hit Swain 2 with the Warmogs can maybe turn my loss streak into a win streak starting stage three. But then as you watch the game go on, it's probably not the case, right? Okay, so <clears throat> Right? These swains are literally there as meat shields. Oh, against this guy? Against this guy. Let me go back a little bit. Against this guy? I I, I scouted him. I knew he was in my potential matchup, right? Um But this is experience. There is a, I would say there's a 90% chance he beats me. Or maybe 80%. And I I put this board out. It's a bit greedy. Um because I knew it would be like a one or two unit loss just by evaluating his board. But this was a little too close for comfort. So <clears throat> I almost got punished for it, as you can see. Kind of a kind of a little greedy. That, that's a that's a mistake that I like sometimes I overvaluate my my board judgment ability. And it, it, it lets me like barely win a fight when I'm trying to lose greed. Right. So as you can see, it's going on. I'm getting kind of scared. Then Calista didn't rend. I'm getting a little scared here. It's fine, right? It's Ionia Jin. Honestly, not even close. It's not even close. But like, look, great loss. Great, great loss. Um. Okay, so I don't make the swing yet. Probably should I? Because look, if you see, uh. If you see what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at my next potential matchups, right? And the way you look at your next potential matchups is if you look at the right side of the screen where the you see your opponents, the ones with like crosses under their names are the potential matchups, right? Like I don't beat any of these guys, even with Swain 2. Maybe this guy, but even then he has like two or three smear items. So even with Swain 2, I think I lose. I, I put my I put my Cassipia in the middle to try to like maybe cheese a unit, but I mean in this in this instance I I don't kill anything no matter what I do right. So right the game plan that I mentioned before I have this Swain two with Noxus even though I have zero stacks I'm looking to maybe either start win streaking a little bit or save HP as I'm progressively losing more. As you can probably see that's gonna happen this game. All good. Econ loss, right? Like you can tell that. Oh yeah, my my HP is getting lower, but you have to recognize that seventy one HP five loss is considered pretty good. Um, I mean, if you're if you're a Smurf, and you get lucky, you can even get it to like eighty HP sometimes. But like that, that's not as important as securing the five loss, because uh, as a lot of you know that the 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 loss streak interest counts twice into neutrals once going into the round and then again after it so yeah i am in an insane econ lead right so i get this bow i was gonna flex between sorks or um maybe like ad flex aka usually zeri so since i get two bows i'm thinking all right it's probably like a zeri game right so slam a rage blade um I would have slammed a Rage Blade on um, Cassiopeia, but I feel like this Callista makes better use of it. That put Cassiopeia back in, right? Right. I don't want to slam Runans yet, because uh, I think Giant Slayer is very good. I don't know if I greed for it. I should. If I was human. Right, and the Cloak can be like... It can be Quicksilver late game. Quicksilver is one of Zeri's best items late game, because she just... She's undistracted. She's uncc'd. She can just hit away. Yeah. She, she doesn't get cc'd, basically. So then she can build Rage Blade stacks and all that. So here, right, even though I have Swain 2 Warmogs, most of my board's unupgraded. I'm versing a Rex High 2 with two items. I'm not going to win. I'm just trying to kill a few units here and there. So in this situation, I've already accepted. I'm probably just going to keep loose streaking until 3 5, right? Um, I'm going to use the, the gold lead I have to roll heavy at level seven, right? I don't roll at six here because I already accepted that 
I'm not going to win anything. Uh, my only objective here is to save HP. Uh, right, Callista helps a lot with that. Swain buys a lot of time. I'm trying to evaluate how to make my board not garbage. Honestly, Ori, like, maybe helps me kill an extra unit. But here, none of these options are good. I'm scouting around to see how AP heavy this lobby is. So if I could take D-Claw, and I've seen that literally, like, none are AP. Or maybe one guy. I don't want to take rapid fire cannon because I want more damage on Zeri, so I take edge of night in preparation for Urga. I don't want to play Yasuo because I feel like that that comp has like a lower cap, right? I feel like that comp, unless you high roll out the Hones, it's it's uh it's usually a fourth at best, right? And if I'm blue streaking, I might as well just play for something of a higher cap. Um, right. So I killed three units here, which is optimal, right? It's fine. 57 HP. I mean, yes, I'm hurting in game, and I'm also hurting IRL, but whatever, you know, it's fine. I'm holding Vi in case, because uh, I'm, look, like, I'm holding failure units, right? Because I'm planning to play between Aphelios and Zeri, and both comps require failure, right? So I'm all already holding the failure units. I'm holding the Vi as potential bruiser to my Sedge. I'm moving to this side because I feel like it's more optimal to kill more units, right? Even though, I mean, in this match, it's whatever. I, I actually am hoping I lose to this. Because he's level 5, so I'm guaranteed a good loss. I'm pretty sure I lose to this, right? It's so good. I think I kill Irelia as well. It's also good, right? Nice. Another th 3 unit loss. So 42 HP. You might be thinking, oh no, it's over. It's, it's done. He's done for. He's out of the game. It's an eighth. Nah. Nah. So where do I take all cards from here? Uh, honestly, if there was a Zeri, I probably would have taken it. I don't care about the Felios because it's a rod. I don't want another rod. So I take the sword for Giant Slayer, right? Right? Giant Slayer is very good in this lobby. A lot of people reroll. I saw a Bruiser player. So you always want a Giant Slayer against a Bruiser player. This roll down, I'll explain exactly what I'm looking for. So I take the Gwen because Gwen's always a good unit. Azir can leave. I see a Gwen pair. I'm holding on to it. Right. I'm selling the useless units. Putting gunners. I'm dizzy. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little dizzy. Hold the failures just in case, but I'm prioritizing. Um, I'm prioritizing Zeri. Okay, so I have a Gwen too. Obviously, the Rage Blade Giant Slayer goes on Zeri. What do I take here? I immediately think Zonia's. Wait, let me go back a little bit. You might be thinking like, um, what should I take here? Cleaver? I don't need it because I have um, I have Shred already in the form of Freljord. Also, it's not a high impact item on Zeri. I'd rather save the last item for Quicksilver or something like that, right? Randoran's Omen, that's a Keck W. Randoran's Omen 2023. Okay, it, it, it's not a bad item, especially early game, but since I'm already like progressing towards late game a little bit, it doesn't do anything. I have a Gwen 2. I'm thinking what out of all these items can impact my board the most right now? Obviously, Zone is probably Gwen's best in slot out of all the Orn items. Gives all good stats, defensive stats and AP for Gwen. Obviously the stasis helps. So I'm taking the Zonias because I need to start saving HP. I need to start making a real board. And I'm really glad I picked up the Gwen because I feel like Gwen is an unrated character. Like you, you typically wouldn't assume you play Gwen with Zeri, right? Or or Felios. But um she she's a good she's a good unit where you have like extra AP items and healing items, and then you just try and like Frankenstein some random thing into your board. She's very useful for that, especially stage three and stage four. Okay. So I don't roll that much more because I have a Gwen too. I already knew that I'm pretty much stable. Um, I have a Zeri. If I was insecure, I'd slam the Edge of Night on. Zeri, but I I think I have an opportunity to have a higher cap, so I just leave it on the bench the whole game. It is what it is. Or, or for a couple of rounds. Um, I obviously don't want to put it on Gwen, because I feel like the interaction between Zonia's 
and Edge of Night is not a favorable one. I feel like they just both get used at the same time. And I'm just wasting a slot, right? Um, I mean, also, if I get another rod, I could just make a Ionic Spark on Gwen, and it'll be fine, right? She's basically... She's my duo carry. Shaggers. Okay, so my spot is pretty good. I have Sedge Pair. <clears throat> List Pair, I'm probably thinking of rolling uh, for at least more copies of... To hit one of these pairs, ideally Sedge, get more copies of Zeri uh, and Urgot. So, I wonder what I do here. I completely forgot, honestly. I should roll, though. Okay, so, like I mentioned before, Quicksilver is very good. Um, You might you might be tempted to make IE Infinity Edge on Zeri, but then, um, I feel like late game, it's not as much, it's not as much usefulness as Quicksilver. Because I'd rather have a Zeri that hits non-stop, builds Rage Blade, applies the Viral and Plague, just undistracted, just popping off, rather than just, I don't know, IE, more damage, you know? Like, I feel like late game, Quicksilver definitely is more utility. And I make, I, I want to slam something on Gwen here as well. Um, honestly, it would have it would have been fine to also slam Giant Slayer on Gwen. Oh, I also hit the Sedge too naturally. So then I, I felt like once I hit that, I could greet a little bit and try to go eight. Um, so I slam Titans instead, which is not like it's not bad, but I think maybe Giant Slayer in hindsight is a little bit better. Um, Quicksilver, right? Yep. So eventually, in this game, I start uh, planning out what my level 8 board is. I mean, generally, when you play Gwen, you just throw in a random Aatrox for Slayer. Um, eventually, right? But, and then you play... What I'm thinking is I play Aatrox and then play Senna. Senna for Shadow Isle, Aatrox for Slayer. Ow, my shoulder hurts. Invoker, Emblem, Keck, Three's a Crowd, Keck. Uh, Unify's pretty good. Social Distancing is also pretty good. I, I actually, I'm a big fan of Social Distancing, so... Yeah. I mean, I play TFT, I basically inherently Social Distancing. Hey, yo! Um... I mean, my Econ's looking good. I should be scouting around right now to see how many people are contesting Zeri and Urgot. So sometimes I get lazy, and this game was early in the morning too, so I'm like, whatever. So now I start scouting, I check that it's Kentank Overload. But what's good about what's what's good about that matchup is he doesn't have a belt item, aka Warmog, so the Kentank actually isn't gonna like one shot my Zeri, right? Especially when I two start. And you can notice here, I keep the Sedge and Gwen like in front of my Zeri, so then there's less chance of something just randomly wrapping around and just getting onto my Zeri because she's not she's like a she's like a baby girl right now she's not very tanky. She's as soft as a baby's butt bum. Sorry, I apologize. Um. Anyways, all right, I'm wind streaking. And this is a skill in and of itself, right? I obviously have Gwen 2 and Swain uh, and Sedge 2. Well, I, I, I would have rolled if I didn't get the Sedge 2 naturally. Just to hit, like, maybe at least Lissandra or another Zeri, right? Um, here, I hold the Gwen. I recognize, I scout later. I recognize no one's playing this unit. So the possibility of hitting Gwen 3 is very, very real. Um, copium. Uh... Okay, so I'm going to plan on my board very soon. I don't know when, but very soon. I remember doing it. I usually don't do it, but it's helpful. Uh, oh, now I do it. Let's see. I clear all. Obviously, Gwen, Zeri. I put the units I already have. Urgot. Now I'm thinking, what can help my Zeri? Senna, Aatrox, right? Um, Sandra, and just to fill your units, right? That's, that's basically it. This is my team. Right, I get twos on for Zeri. I don't care about fours on as much if I can get the five costs. I'm not even watching my own fight. Like, it, there's, it serves no purpose to watch my fight. But now, like, I have this plan in place. Uh, if I don't get it, 
I'm probably just gonna play like Urgot in and the three zone. I had this Edge of Night on my bench for like 10 years. So here, um, Aatrox and Senna, both I want, right? I think I prioritize Senna. Which is honestly, I'm not sure if that, if that was the right choice because at least I could put Edge of Night on Aatrox. Honestly, screw it. They're both good. Oh, oh no, no. I, I took Senna so I can make a Gunblade. Right. I can, I took Senna so I can make a Gunblade on Gwen. Right. It, it's Senna and I, I have a useful item that I can make. Okay, cool. That's why it's okay. I was like, huh? Right, so I get the Urgot. See, I already have a plan in place. I just... It's simple. Just take it out and put it in. Rolling. Try to get my Zeri 2. Hit my Zeri 2. Pago. Noxus. Right, I have one spot. I mean, Scion. One spot. Sion's a good unit, so I'll get Aatrox, right? We chillin'. Then in this case, I finally have Edge of Night Holder. Cool, cool. Sell the, sell the Jinx. And I'll be honest. I'm laying the smack down right now, right? I sacrificed my early game HP. Obviously, I hit the Gwen too. Lucky, lucky hit. But I, I feel like a lot of people wouldn't even hold the Gwen out of like natural instinct. So you have to, you have to consider her, especially stage three and four, as a form of secondary carry, right? It's not always if you play Zeri, you have Zeri, Zeri four is on this, 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 right? Sometimes you gotta open your mind a little bit. Uh, I remember I got so tilted because the like the Ari guy just randomly hits Ari too out of nowhere. I'm just like, alright. That's fun. So what I'm planning right now, I have two options. I go nine for Aatrox. Which is I mean it's pretty it's it's like pretty consistent, right? Aatrox, maybe Heimer as well. Right. Heimer drop down to three Felyord. Add in Aatrox. That could definitely be a plan. But I'm thinking I want Gwen 3. Why? Because I have 5 Gwens, no one's playing this unit, and there's like a bunch of other 4 costs gone, which thins out the pool and it gives me a higher likelihood of getting Gwen. Right? I, I remember there's a there's an instance in this game where I was just like, alright, no one's playing Gwen, everyone's hitting these bunch of like 2 star other 4 costs, I should just commit to it, right? But a mistake I make is I don't roll while everyone's still alive. Right, so I roll, I think, near the end when mo half the lobby's dead. Which, you know, that means the four costs are being put back into the pool. So I think that was my mistake. Here. Like, if I'm going to commit to Gwen 3, I might as well commit to Gwen 3 at an optimal time. See, I'm, all, I'm always thinking, like, I, I make mistakes too. I make a lot of mistakes. So. Alright, I just make Econ here. Make Econ here. I'm evaluating right now whether it's worth to go nine. Put the tier on center for early cast. I'm scouting. Oh yeah, this guy hit RE2 in like two seconds. The last place guy. He went from no RE's to RE2 in like five gold in a Snickers bar. Anyways. So I'm th like, once I see that guy's board, I'm thinking I can't beat him ever. Unless I have like Exodia. So that's why I think that's what influenced my uh, reasoning to go for Gwen 3 this game. Like, I should just be rolling next turn. I should be committed to Gwen 3 while everyone's still alive and be like a Giga Chad. But I'm still like thinking, like, I, I was just molding at this guy. Like, I can't ping him. I'm looking at it. I'm question questioning whether life is fair. I'm physically in place of where Ari is, and I ping it. There's no justice in this world. Anyways, um, yeah, I should be rolling right now. I should be rolling right now before people die. 100%. Because I'm I'm thinking, oh, I could just still bring in the Heimer and Aatrox. Screw that. Just, let's, just, let's just go for Gwen 3, man. What are you doing, bro? What are you doing, Voidsin? Um, 
Right, like I'm still I'm still in La La Land. Wait, like my re reasoning is I'm still like beating everybody. I I I've I know I'm gonna lose to Ari guy though eventually. So I I, I see the two star Yasuo and Sejuani getting hit. So I'm like. Right. I should be going for this. And you might be thinking, there's no way this guy doesn't hit Gwen 3, right? There's no way. If there's any universal fairness, there's no way this guy doesn't hit Gwen 3. If there's justice in this world, there's no way, right? No. No. You're about to be in for a rude awakening. Spoiler alert. But I think it's still the right play to go for Gwen 3. Even if hypothetically, no spoilers, I don't hit this unit. Um, hypothetically, of course. It's like, okay, no one's dead yet. I, I make the mistake. I make the mistake of of still slow bowling but 50. But I have to take into consideration that everyone's still alive. Therefore, all the four costs that they're taking are still out of the pool. Which obviously helps my odds, right? So I should be rolling to like 10 next turn. Like, why am I slow rolling above 50 here, right? And this is this is like something that I'm like I'm coaching myself, you know, like mod review, like what are you doing? But it's good to have like a second opinion. And in my case, an opinion, because it's not a second opinion, it's just mine. Anyways, um Oh, well, I realized you're I realized here I should have taken like I should have taken Shiv right off the bat because I don't have any form. Why is it not Frolly Wood? I'm trolling that. I should take Arkham Yield. Alright, send it. Oh, I am sending it. Oh, never mind. I am sending it. So I do have. No, no, send it more, dude. No, 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 no. None of this 40. Okay. No. No, no, no. Send it 10 gold. Okay, honestly, even even if, even if like, hypothetically, like everyone else died, there's no way I don't hit in like legit 700 gold, give or take a few like 600. But like, come on, like let's get serious. This is the this is absolutely the correct play. I stand by it. We, we this Gwen three is the move. Also, there's this guy. I feel like I just never kill it. I don't have anti heal for some reason. Like, once he hits Garen 3, I am screwed. Right, like, I even lose right now. Like, alright, it's the healing bros, I guess. Alright, send it, send it, please. I'm gonna hit Urgot. Okay, so, like, I mean, I guess my thought process is all or nothing. Econ up, roll out to neutrals. Like a boss. No, honestly, I roll enough gold to like to like raise the miners from the California gold rush up from the dead. But like, still, like, come on, man. Like, I, I rolled so much gold. And yet, it didn't even matter. Because that's CFC. Sometimes the game. Pretty good. Top three. Alright, I'm, evalu I'm evaluating my situation, right? Second place guy. I mean, the, the, the DG guy. Ari player. Never beating. Yet. Um, going nine. Especially when he goes nine. Like, I. He's also I I recognize he's holding Gwen. That guy, once he hits Garen 3, I ain't killing anything without Gwen 3. So Well You about to see. Okay, my roll downs are pretty good. Like I'm rolling a little bit preemptively because um yeah. 
I, I might not roll, be able to roll in time. One Gwen. There's no way, right? There's no way I don't hit. I'm even buying four costs. I am APM King. I'm Faker. But, okay. I even try to go for her. I got three. A little bit, you know? Look at him go. Statistically, surely I hit. I have Aatrox, but I can't really play it, right? I have Scion too. Cool. Cool. And here's where I meet my maker. This guy's level nine. Look, even though I went third here, I guess this guy didn't get already two out of like the depths of the abyss. Then I, I probably would have went one top two. I probably would have went nine to secure my top two. But like I don't be any of these guys, right? So, so, so I don't be any of these guys. I mean, yeah, it's just I'm just dead, right? So, I mean, this is a classic loot streak game. It should have been a top two if the game was fair and the universe is fair, but whatever. Sometimes people are gonna high roll, right? I rolled like legit like 300 gold for Gwen. Okay, not 300, but a lot. And I just unjustifiably didn't hit. Obviously, I should have rolled a little bit earlier, but that's hindsight. Like, there's no way I don't hit it. Like, come on, brother. Come on. Um, But yeah, I I optimized my lose streak early game so that instead of being like 60 HP, I was 71 instead. Where I killed a few units here and there. There's that one round I agreed a little too much against the Ionia guy, and I could have potentially won against him. But using my experience, I was like, yeah, I'm probably gonna lose. Um, as long as he doesn't like change his board. And then I continued lose streaking, stage three, rolled down stage five, got a Gwen three, to Gwen went two, decided to itemize it, went eight after I hit the stage two, rolled down again to stabilize. I mean, that's just what TFT is, but like sometimes. You, the most important thing if you're loose streaking is knowing what you're looking for at 3-5. Whether it's Urgot, Zeri, Gwen, um, tanks, Freljord units. If you're a Zeri player, it's just Freljord. And like, if you don't find Zeri, it's J uh, Jinx 2, Jace 2, I don't know, like, you know, like, maybe one Urgot, right? So, yeah, that's basically it.